Look, I'm thrilled to have these wonderful women here today. They'll have a lot of great things to offer. Um, let me introduce Kerry Wahia. Kerry's an actress and producer. Uh, she, her company, Brown Sugar Apple Grunt Productions. It's a long, she might explain the name if you're lucky, if she's got time. Um, Kerry's uh, produced some very successful web series uh, and um, I was lucky enough to work with Kerry on Fallout in this theatre, the show earlier this year. Um, and what she doesn't know about producing web series isn't worth knowing. Mine of information. Gabrielle. Gabrielle Vincent is the program manager, have I got the title right, of the Basement <coughs> Theatre. And she has, uh, uh, well, been working freelance as a producer and in the last, how long did you take off this job, over this job, six months ago? Um, yeah, about, oh, about nine months ago. Nine, nine months ago, um, Gabrielle took on the full-time job. She also comes from a, a stage management background and she's a, an amazing stage manager. So what she doesn't know about the theatre and now putting stuff into these theatre and into these venues, which will be really uh, um, an appropriate discussion for you guys, um, well, we're very lucky to have her. And of course, Michelle Lafferty. Michelle Lafferty has uh, Elephant uh, Publicity, who do, I would say, the vast majority of theatre productions. You keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Theatre yeah. 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 productions in, in Auckland and around the country, and um, an extremely experienced publicist, and also comes from a theatre producing background as well. So well steeped in the industry. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thrilled Thank to you. have you. Can we please give them a welcome? <laughs> so the title of this green room is promoting, what have you been given? Promoting? Promoting yourselves. Yourself. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean to you? When, you? when you saw that topic, what did you think in relation to your work and the acting fraternity? Um, personally for me, I thought... Um, I, I work doing publicity, so there's a couple of things that, that came up for me. And first of all, when I meet an actor, how am I going to publicise them? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's for you, making sure you've got assets available to you that can easily be used and read by people. So that's basically any clips, photos, bios, um, anything like that that you have that can be completely up to date, that people can then utilise to help sell your show or your product. Um, your product actually at this point I reckon in your careers is being yourself. Um, and it, it's a really interesting thing and I've thought about it for my own company but to think about yourself as a brand um, and something I've thought of as an exercise for that which might be helpful is to actually think of yourself as a product. So that might be you know, going back to actual marketing, a product like a, I don't know, like say you did like a, um, you're a canister of tea, mm. um, and working out how you think you can best sell that canister of tea, can actually relate to the actor. Um, yeah, because I think actually if you think about what you want to do to build your brand as an individual person, actor, product. Like what are the qualities of that for instance. Yeah, so, so it's that tea that makes it what's different to every other. What's, what's your flavour? Yeah. Your Darjeeling or a Lapsang Sushi? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, right. that's right. A coarse black tea or a herbal and, tea? And where are you? And where are yeah. you? Where are you? You're in Auckland, obviously, but can you be in Wellington? Can you be in... How much will you work for? What's your price? You know, like yeah. in the beginning, it's probably might be free. It might be, it might be cheap. <laughs> and, and, and then, so where do you want to put yourself to? Where do you want to distribute yourself? Who do you need to be in front of to get work? And what will they look at for you as your brand that they will want to hire? So that's working out. So I see people a lot in my job doing things sometimes because they want to be adventurous, but they're not yet ready to do them. And that's something really important too. Like if you go for interviews or you do things, to know what your strengths and weaknesses are mm. and to play on them. So some people can sing and they can dance and they can talk on live radio and that's all fantastic. And some of the things that might be a weakness in five years might not be a weakness anymore. But knowing who you are and what your brand is and where you want to be and then pursuing that, you know, as well as, as much as you can. So I guess if it's theatre directors or whether it's film directors or whether it's television directors, the easiest way is, I guess, social media. I mean, everything is public now your whole life can be public, so you have to be careful of it, and, but you can use it too to your advantage. Um, so you want to put the product, your Darjeeling tea, 
out there as much as you can and you can you can go as far as you want with it you can design a whole strategy around and have fun with it around where you want to be where you want to meet people you can pursue people on social media you want to be in their face but not look like you're not like be a stalker their face. not like a stalker I find that yeah <laughs> <laughs> Like, for the, like some theatre directors I know, they don't use social media, so maybe find out who you want to be in front of and work out what their predilections or preferences are and then work out how to get to them and what you have to offer them. And that might be, as, that might be trying to get to opening nights, offering to usher. That might be knowing where people go in the community and hang out. Plus, there's something I feel really passionate about with this industry is if you're an actor... You have to have a sense of um, community and humanity. You know, you're in front of a screen, you're part of a greater good, I think, part of a culture of a place. And so have some opinions, have some, have some, I guess, heart, and network with people, and then, and, then, and then get in front of people. This is really relevant to what we were talking about today, isn't it? Earlier today that people were here? about getting out there and in front of people and in places where actors and, yeah. and theatre people are going to be or... or people something. love a volunteer. Yeah. You know, you know, people actually love and they won't exploit you. I mean, you have to be careful how much you do, but if you, if you get your face into people's faces and offer to help them or learn from them, it's much better than bringing them and taking up their time in a formal interview. You know, people are too busy and they're too yeah. underfunded to have time, a lot of time for people. Mm. But if you offer to help or get involved with them and be smart about it, learn out what they like before you go for an audition or an interview or anything, find out, go to theatre, watch television, be in, so you know what that person is vital about. Because yeah. no one is in this industry who is in here now who, if they're not vital people. It attracts people who are passionate. You know. And I'd also, also say that there's no excuse for not knowing who people are. Yeah. Google's an amazing Yeah, absolutely. Tool. Look at their website, look at what they've done. And, and go so to you're their not shows. going, oh, who's that? You know, like who directed the show? What have they done? Yeah. Yeah. And it's and, and it's absolute bullshit and to people I've I've actors who don't who want to go to auditions and they've never been to see a show or work of those people. If you don't have the money, it would be fine to email the person and say I really want to see your work, but I, I, you know, I don't have the money. Can I do anything to help you in return for a ticket? Have a bit of spunk. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Just um, briefly back to what you expect when you say meet that actor and what information you need. Oh yeah. Okay. I know that you're trying to pitch stories yeah. all the time. Now let me just explain that. So um, you want a little hook mm. for to get into that, well, you know, what's a woman's day story? What's a Sunday star time story? What's a canvas story? They've all got a different flavor, right? So yes. you're looking for things that you can pitch to, because those people aren't going to come and hunt, hunt you down, no. are they? The job, publicist's job is to go to those people and say, to offer them an idea of a story, right? So the yes. more that you can give someone like Michelle, the pub, or the publicists working for Michelle, the more they've got to get go you out there. Get you so out if there. you haven't had a lot of exposure, then the, the, the deal is really your job. Will, and be, when you become famous, like I can just go with Jennifer, hey, Jennifer's in a show. And people go, oh, we did it one week ago, or we'll do it again. So that's, it makes my job really easy. But if I have people that don't have a profile, what I, what, I, what I will do to try and hustle them out there is if they give me all of the information. I don't want to be. I don't want to be looking. I want a really well written biography. Um, so, and that might. If you go and look at some of the things online, people go part of the training, like a blurb. I guess about that long, and you can see what they're like. You can then also ring the publicist and say, "What do you need in this blurb?" But what it needs to have is something else apart from I studied at this, I played this part. When you're at, at an emerging level, it's good to bring in some other things like. Where you live. Where if you, you live, have, so, look, then you'll get in like the Harvard News or something. Then you'll get in the Harvard News, or you have any other, if you have any other hobbies, or if you have anything else that could be relevant for a story, if you have, you have a particular love of something, you know, like for example, if 
we're talking about the Rugby World Cup at the moment, and you had a view on that, that's what I would go, well, they are actually staying up all night too, so an All Blacks costume for their pet poodle, because they <laughs> want to walk it. So that, that, that's it's my job, to come up with yeah. those things, but you to be open to that. And sometimes it's really hard Did you to... pick the 50-point win? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then you see me. Yeah. But it's about thinking laterally, isn't yeah, it? Because the publicists have to think laterally. They're going, you know, what's a good... How can we kind of tailor this story? And really, for people, I remember first working with Di Henwood back when he had zero profile, and he used to just be doing shows down here. And he, and I would always push him out and got him heaps of stuff because he would always answer me within hours. I could email him at night, and he would get back to me, have a written thing and a photo back to me within an hour. He would write things. He would go to any interviews. He wasn't, but he was able to. You shouldn't do things that you can't do. But he was, and even now he's still. He still does it. He's, he was keen for that when he had zero profile, and I reckon that's what actually helped to catapult him. He had talent, but it catapulted him into fame as he was right there, hungry, and right back to people within, you know, mm. an hour or whatever. And his stuff might have been the same as some of those, but you could trust that he would always deliver a reasonable response. Yeah. Thanks, Michelle. Um, Gabby, what do you think um, when you have actors or, or um, product? Um, small productions through mm. here. What sort of information or, or advice do you give for performance? Um, I guess. Well, I work quite closely with um, shows when they're when we um, get to the marketing stage of the shows. Um, I help them with that, and a lot of work with marketing is on social media and um, coming up with a transmedia plan. Do you guys know what that is? Um, where it's um, thinking about all social media platforms so thinking about um, Facebook Twitter Instagram how you can link them all up and um, promoting on every single channel possible because um, you've got all the different followers there and um, so yeah working I guess yeah that's how we work closely um, with people have you um, seen have you seen shows or people sort of rise or fall on on how far they get out to the community I mean fail or, or succeed yeah. on the level of engagement with people? Yes, um, I guess with social media it's that fine balance. Um, sometimes you can um, bombard people on social media and you guys have probably all experienced that where some shows will um, just promote far too much on Facebook and to the point where you just get annoyed with them. What and do you think is far too much? Um, like how do we well, what, we, what we encourage is that um, if to set up a Facebook page at least two months before you start your show, and then you're posting every now and then, um, like maybe once a week, once or twice a week, mm -hmm. and then when you get two weeks out, that's your point where you are um, you should be posting about your show every day and really start to. Wrap but that's something up. new every day, isn't it? It's something new. You don't every want the day. same thing. No. Right. So, so you want kind of like a teaser kind of thing. Yeah. So it's really good to do um, short videos, like a trailer. Um, it's really good to introduce your actors. I mean, that's an awesome way to promote the actors in your cast. Um, and uh, it might be even, they might do a short bio, mm -hmm. or it might be their favourite line of the play. Mm. Um, yeah, and just, just being really creative about um, who your target audience is and how you can speak to them. Um, and also, I think flyering works really well. Mm -hmm. And getting to um, a, a few people, it doesn't. It happens a lot during comedy festival, during fringe festival, where people um, are waiting in our foyer and they're flyering people, audiences as they come out. And that seems to be really successful because you're really connecting with your audience and um, they can put a face to uh, to the show. Mm. I think that's important. I'm not sure if anybody's um, following Silo on uh, on Facebook, but you'll see they're starting to put some really hilarious shots of the food that Hudson and Halls are cooking. Uh, going the, and Hudson and Halls, uh, which might not mean anything to a vast majority of you, but there were some two crazy cooks um, <laughs> in the 70s, really. I think the 70s. 80s. 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 God, 100 years ago. Um, and... Um, and of course, cooking then and cooking now is quite different. So they're, they're chefs. Anyway, some of them, the photos are just, they've, they've got some sort of extraordinary, kind of ghastly looking um, <laughs> 70s and 80s kind of meals with that nameless dish, which I thought was a really great yeah, way of kind of just 
teasing out, giving us a feel for the show. Mm. But also they're being interactive. Yes. They're getting you to engage yes. with what they're doing. Yes. And that's something you do a lot, don't you? Yeah. You, you um, Well, you do. I mean, for any show that's coming out, I'm thinking, you know, Auckland Days or Daryl, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, what, what, are, what are things that you do? And what, how do you think actors can best promote themselves? Um, well, I guess for us, we're, we're very much into kind of interactivity but also niche audiences is big for us rather than trying to please every single person um, that's not going to work for us for our shows and I think that probably as an actor I would think that way too I'm not going to be cast in a, in a role um, that maybe they're looking for a mainstream type person who you know they're not looking for afro so I'm probably not going to get that role. So there's no point for me to market to that show. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. so, so, so you kind of have to um, think about what what's unique about you and what's your niche and, and how can you push that to start with because that's and what you're interested in as well. I think if you're really interested in something, then you're going to be you're going to be much better in that area. Mm. Um, but yeah, so interactivity is is a big one for us and our fans. And when we started with Auckland Days, that was kind of a lot of the premise of making that show was interacting with the audience. And if you want to make a web series or you want to be online and you want to be a personality there, then that's a big thing because the audience, or it's not they're not even called audience; they're a fan, they're fan base, and fans um, help to develop your content and they help by giving you feedback. And that makes you go, oh, okay, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna do that because 10,000 people have asked me to make a video about that. So that's what I'm gonna do. So fans help to develop your content um, and they help and they, and they have a say in that and they interact with that and they give you feedback and that feeds you. I, I totally know because we got very addicted to it when we were doing Auckland Days. Mm -hmm. We were just like, what do they want? Who are they gonna vote for now? You know, and, and we wanted to be able to, um, Give them what they wanted yeah. because that's what why they kept coming back. And they back. were flexible enough in that model to be able to respond. To yeah, that that's right. And they just wanted to be they wanted to be part of the story and own the content. And that's powerful. That moves your that moves your stuff. So as a producer, it's obviously important for you that you've got actors who are willing to publicise and promote stuff. Because yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have so Fussy will do anything. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so will Melon. Yeah, because it's a point where where the show's going to go out and you need the press around. Yeah, that. I mean, I think I think with us and with our shows, we really, with our comedies anyway, we do a lot of improv because we, the people that we cast, we trust that they're going to come to the table with offers. And we want them to come with offers because as soon as they do, that content becomes theirs and it's part of them. And they feel really good about it and then they want to go and promote it and put it out there and, and show themselves off. And that's awesome because that's what we want too. Because the audience is going to be laughing and and connecting and engaging with them. So so that's really important to mm -hmm. us that that our creatives you know have a have a say. So what happens if um, and maybe this is a question for you first, Michelle. Uh, have you been in, in the situation where an actor hasn't divulged something that the press have found out about? perhaps something personal that um, they probably thought nobody would ever find out and somebody has? I've had a couple of more celebrity, like celebrities who have, and it's really for, yeah, I have. I remember Jill, when I did Julian Cleary, <laughs> he was a nightmare. <laughs> Bless his heart. And but, he, <laughs> but obviously, but he'd had some sort of sex scandal in Australia. Um, before he came before, to New Zealand, many years, no, many years ago. So he thought it was totally over, I think. And he gets on Kim Hill. Um, of course, she's going to know everything about you. So I mean, she's going to know everything about you ever that you've might have forgotten yourself. And she brings it up, and I could see him in the studio start to sweat, you know, and he just wanted to talk about his chickens. Mm. But he had to deal with it <laughs> on the spot. Um, but he, you know, he had that had come out before. And another time, a woman from. I was dealing with a woman from Clannard. So these are kind of bigger. And she had, she was an Irish woman, and she had, back in the day, and you know, big Irish Catholic saying she was a Catholic, but she'd had an abortion, and she'd written a book about it. But 
um, never wanted to talk about it again. But of course, if you've written a book about something, well, she got she got outed by the church. It was huge, you know. It's their culture, and and then of course, I think it was on national radio. She got asked that too, and had a bit of a breakdown. Um, hence, sold a lot of tickets, though. And maybe, um, and maybe some books. Yeah, and maybe. Some but that books. was her but, but she didn't want to. And in fact, you should be really clear about that. But it's usually only. I mean, unless it's really obvious, do you know what I mean? And you've just done something outrageous and everybody knows about mm. that. Um, so I guess what I want to ask you is if somebody came to you and they wanted to be personally publicised in yeah. some way or have this production that they were involved in publicised, would you want to know, would you... What like I they have to, to tell? Would I need to know? Would you need to know? Potentially, depending on what it was. Yeah. Uh, I think it's better to be... What you should know when you're working with a publicist if you have are able to do that is they are working for you and so there's a lot of publicists I reckon who can be a bit haughty and what have you but they are working for you so they do what you want they their job is to best represent you in the marketplace so if they know these things they can work out a strategy with you so I think it's always good to tell them everything they should so be your voice that's yeah. what you're employed to do I'm thinking if you had a, a drink driving conviction or something like that um, um, that somebody <coughs> I would Some weigh it up. journalist might. Yeah, I would, I would tell your publicist, yeah. and then as long as you knew them and trusted them, and then they can weigh up whether it's relevant. And also, maybe then you've got an answer should it come up. Yeah. I, I guess that's what I'm, I'm heading towards is yes. you should not be surprised no. in the, in the uh, interview. Starting off, you're not likely to get those kind of things, but you are always better to. And you can also ask too, I mean, we do this, if someone wants to have a little rehearse, or know yeah. what kind of questions that we can have a little go, you know, to and fro to, to have a practice of what that would be. Mm. I mean, you know, it's always good. I always tell people take a breath and repeat the question back to the person. And if you can take a breath and repeat the question back, your mind has got those few moments. And to you don't just go to an answer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it's the same. Actually, and I'm really terrible at it because I'm a hothead. But it's the same with social media and also emails. If you take a breath and read it again, then you'll be doing a lot better off. Leave it for 24 hours sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really bad at it though. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm really bad. Um, <laughs> Carrie, I remember us having a conversation a while ago um, about uh, an actor in one of your productions who, halfway through the show, completely changed his look. <laughs> um, this person shall remain nameless, I hasten to add. But can you tell me a little bit about that and, uh, and what, as a producer, what that, what that meant for you? Um, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so, 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 yeah, one of our actors looked a particular way, and then, and then when we came to shoot with them two weeks later, they looked completely different. You'd already <laughs> done some shooting? Oh, yeah, we've done, we've done okay. a lot. Um, so, we were very lucky because we had a structure, we had kind of planned to overshoot anyway, which is what we do a lot with comedy. Um, and we had uh, so the type of show that it was in the structure meant that we could cover almost, but if it were a drama or something else, we would have been completely screwed. But did we that require sort of screwed. hours and hours of you having to rejig things? Oh yeah, it's it's a massive, massive problem. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big so was it like thing. Was it's it like here? Was like here? It it was all kinds of here. <laughs> <laughs> it was like all kinds of. Oh yeah. right, okay. So you couldn't, okay, just get so you couldn't instantly it, grow it, a beard it, back. It, it for was. It, it was a completely. I was just like that. Looks like a different person. <laughs> right. So <laughs> did they have to get taken out of the? Sh of the um. Stuff you yeah. Basically, we had to cut around that. Yeah, we definitely we had to cut around it. But we also had to get the writer to kind of write a couple of new scenes for the people who were still in, so that they could film that, so we could <laughs> piece together. Stuff and yeah, yeah. They kind of like so. So we had to we had to shoot a couple of new scenes and um, put in a believable story for why that person was yeah. missing. So don't um, so don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> that would be my advice. He walked into an elevator. Yeah, and, and also even if you even if you thought you'd finished shooting, you know what pickups are, don't you? You finish your normal say three weeks of shoot, and then often once they've started editing and putting things together they realise they're missing X, Y, Z to, to knit the thing together. So you come back and shoot little bits and pieces. Yeah, that's right. And usually we put that in the contract. Yeah. Like, so in the contract, it'll be, um, 
Um, and usually your agent is across there. We will kind of deal with your agent so they'll know. And you'll know, hopefully, because you'll read your contract. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so, so usually, and if we know the pickup days, we put, we'll put them in there so that you know you might be required for these particular days that are pickup days, so please don't go, you know. Yeah. Millen had, like, we, we shot um, uh, Outward Bound, uh, Daryl and Outward Bound story, which is being edited now, and we shot that, Millen was growing his moustache for it and his hair, um, and he had to look like that for a year and a half. Because not pleasant, not pleasant. <laughs> because it's well, no, it's, it's, it's not good because he was living next to a primary school and he looked like a pedophile. Yeah. So it was just like no one was like, I can't leave the house. You have if you want me for a meeting, it has to be nine thirty, and then I have to be back at home by two thirty. So I'm missing the school, you know, when people are coming. <laughs> Throwback so, to the 70s. You know, but yeah. he was dedicated. Yeah, yeah. So you want to know that you know, even if you thought your filming days were over, you know, check yeah. in with your agent and the producers. Can I change my hair? Yeah, cut that's and right. Cut? But also, he had a shoot in between, and in that shoot, they didn't want him with his beard and his hair. So he had to. So that's why we had we shot in February, and then our pickups weren't until September or, or October. So he could grow that back. Yeah, just a few weeks ago, so that he could shave, shoot the other film, you know, shave and cut his hair, shoot the other, and grow it all back for the next. Oh. Yeah. Not a problem that women would have, but <laughs> but anyway. So the advice is, mind you, we could have changed our yeah, hair colour or something like that. So don't do anything silly. And we often get that as well. I'm gonna change my hair colour. Is that gonna be a problem? Blah blah. You know, like they yeah. always let, uh, communication is awesome. Yeah. So I guess I would ask you, would you, in a hurry, use that actor again? Um, I actually really, everything else was awesome about that actor. Yeah. So, so everything else was great. Always on time, um, really added to everything. Uh, great improviser, you know, really awesome. Yeah. Um, and I think that I would, but I would probably just tighten the reins on, right. um, <laughs> on being, uh, and also, well, the other thing was that that actor didn't have an agent. So I, so I had to deal directly with that person. And that can often be tough, I think, um, because you have to talk to, instead of dealing with an agent where you get to, I don't know, I guess you get to bash heads and, and debate and negotiate. But if you're doing it with the person, they have to come back on set. And so you have to be very careful because you want, every, you want the set to be a really awesome environment for everybody. Yeah. So if you have to bash heads with your actor and then they show up and they're really grumpy, then that's a problem for all of us. You yeah. know? So, um, yeah. So, but, but having said that, um, that person was very apologetic and um, I think just... Just, yeah, hadn't, just hadn't thought of it. Probably just really hadn't thought of it. Just really didn't think of it. And you know, so so I'm so I am so and I and I actually would still definitely work with that person. Yeah. But um like I said, I'd probably be way more um hands on? Yeah, way, way more uh, well I'm quite communicative anyway, I like to think. So I'd probably be a bit more every day. Yeah. Just some text messages. Look yeah. at the same. No, Send me a phone. Don't, 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 don't what are you doing? Yeah. Prove yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Hi! Yeah. Give me a photo, I miss yeah. your face. I guess what I guess what I and I'd like to ask you, Gabby, with your stage manager's hat on too, because I guess what I'm I'm talking around is the impression that actors give. Because mm. your your um the impression that you give to people is really, what's, your, what's the word I'm looking for, your, come on. It's your calling card. I mean, it's yeah. your number one oh, thing. Right, right. right on the tip of my tongue. But what, how you are and how you appear to people is, is a valuable mm -hmm. asset and yeah. in this business because people remember the late comer. Yeah. People remember the person who didn't turn up for the interview because they'd been out drinking and they yeah. weren't able to do the breakfast show on ZM at, at yeah. 7.50 a.m. Well, the and the publisher, which is a terrible thing for the publicist, <laughs> who's getting calls from the... I still have it with people who, who don't turn up to interviews, television interviews, that you've been fighting to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they just oh, come yeah. on, they don't ring, they don't answer their phone, and it's just completely unacceptable. Yeah, so that's just completely unprofessional. We don't do that. Mm. And we were just, we were talking before about just being polite 
to not only your actors but the crew. Don't yes. underestimate the crew yes. in film or theatre. Um, it's such a small industry in New Zealand, yeah. Yeah. and we talk. That's and right. <laughs> and most producers will have um, assistants or production. Um, coordinators or production managers that they love and that they will work with again because as you know as a producer and you're running off your feet those people uh, you know we're we're the we're the heart that keeps everything working and you know beating and if everything's running smoothly on set that's because it's nuts in production we're going crazy to make it happen and if you piss off or are rude or are, you know impolite to a production manager or a producer's assistant or a production coordinator, we will hear about it. We yeah. will know. And then we will be like, eh, don't know if I care enough about working with that person again. Because like you say, we're underpaid. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's a yeah. hard industry. Everybody's underpaid. And if, if we're going to show up to work and it's a battle every day, then what's yeah. the point? Reputation. That was the word I was after. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Your reputation is your calling card. Your reputation is everything. Um, yeah, as you said, if you've got you've been fighting to get uh, an interview, and they're not easy, no. are they? If no. you line up a, an interview on breakfast or good morning, there are a hundred other people who mm. want to get yeah. on good morning to publicise their yeah. show, but if they know you're going to be there, you're going to be there on time, you're going to be able to actually talk to the yeah. interviewers, they go, yeah, sure, we'll have them back. Yeah, that's mm. right. Yeah. And I think it's also about understanding everybody's role as yeah. well. I think yes. that's a really polite thing to do. Absolutely. So yeah. knowing what your stage manager actually does, Yes. Um, and when you've got that understanding, I think mm -hmm. there will be a huge amount of respect yeah. <laughs> for yeah. those people in the crew. And yeah. it isn't just on you. Every like the crew has to be polite. Everybody has to be polite and respectful to everybody else's job. Yeah. You know. And it sometimes doesn't matter how good an actor you are if you're rude to uh, this I don't know a fellow actor or somebody in the crew, and that gets back to the director or the producer. It's they really not nobody's got time to kind of deal again. with that stuff. Yeah, everybody, everybody talks. Yeah, everybody, yeah, talks. everybody, yeah. everybody talks. Yeah. And it's like I always think, you know, marketing one oh one is people will hire their friends and people who are nice to them. They would they would rather hire their friends and people who are nice to them than someone they didn't know. And so just make it easy for them. You know, be their friends, be nice to them. You get more work. Yeah, that's very true. Um we talk about this sometimes in, at, at the Actors Program about we do, do a thing on theatre etiquette. So, for instance, if you're going into Q theatre with your show, you say, make sure that you know who the people are at box office are. Make sure that you know who the head of Q theatre is, who actually runs the theatre. You know, as I said before, you've got no excuse not to know because Google is your friend. You know, who's James Wilson? He's the, um, the CEO of, of Q theatre. Who's underneath them? Who are the people who are the venue technicians who are there pretty well every night on your show, sitting next to the stage manager? You want to be able to say hello to them uh, and know their names, learn their names, especially if you're in there for a decent season. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, we've got, um, <coughs> like to open the floor to some questions. <coughs> Any burning questions? Yes. Um, Jennifer, you mentioned how important it was to turn up to premieres and, and show your face and help, etc., etc. What advice would you give somebody who is not in Auckland or Wellington mm -hmm. um, that still would like to let people know that they exist and yeah. that they're really keen to work and that they're really open to that? What advice would you give? What is polite and seen as proactive yes. if you contact someone by email? And what is seen as annoying and Okay, well, uh, let me tell you the things that I have responded to, say. I'm, s several times over the years, I've been sent a card saying I'm up from Wellington, because I don't know a bunch of the Wellington actors. The Wellington actors from Toy Fakata used to come up here and do um, monologues and stuff. We don't really see those actors, and likewise Christchurch actors. Mm -hmm. So it's only if I go down there and do workshops that I meet a whole bunch of actors, which is fantastic, because I remember them all. Um, but over the years, I've had people write to me a card and say, I'm doing a show up here at, say, the basement. Uh, I'd love you to come and see it. Um, please let me know if you'd like to. I can have ticket, two tickets for you any time you want to come. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of that's done by email. And uh, the one good thing about the basement now is that they have a list of people that they open up to companies who come in and say, you can email these people in the industry and offer them some tickets. That's a wonderful service. Um, and those people have said, yes, it's okay for me to get those. But I've responded to um, 
people on who've sent me things and said and actually have gone to the shows, not all of them if I'm not available. The other thing is it's actually okay to go and introduce yourself. You don't need to hang around for 15 minutes, but you can have a quick yeah, five minute conversation and say hi, I just want to introduce myself. I'm you know, you might want to say I really love your work or if you don't I mean hopefully you do if you want to meet them. But um, but you you know I just want to introduce um, I, I live in Christchurch and um, I'm you know looking to get to know people or just yeah. you know, please don't like it. It is refreshing. It is. People yeah. not emailing you and like texting you and like social media mm. all the time. People are actually come up and say hi. Just really wanted to see your yeah. face and say that you're amazing, and then go home and stay yeah. with them. But you know that, that's actually <laughs> refreshing. Yeah, and you know, but you know, don't over over to this. I just want some advice on what to do in my career. Well, really, on a foyer on an opening night, right. really nobody has got the time to do that. But a, a polite, short conversation is. But it's fine and lovely. And, yeah, it is you know, lovely. they'd have to be a, a, a dick not to be polite back. Mm -hmm. You know. And, and sorry, if I may just add. Of course. Like, if, if you know that, for instance, a certain director is going to do a certain movie that, that I don't know, has got a scene that you're absolutely passionate about, or yeah. I don't know. Um, and normally, I don't know you go through your agent and yeah. all that, but is it is it seen as okay to write an email to that director and say, look, I love what you're doing. I think it's fantastic. You know, I exist. Or is that seen as a no-no because you're not going through the right channel? Oh, that's a mm, that's an interesting. I don't one. mind. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm I'm always happy for people if if they're saying, hey, I really love what you're doing. I live here, but I'd love to be part of that. Yeah. And um, I'm I'm great at organising other human beings, then I'm like, whoa, I got someone to do extras, you know, like, so, and then you can come on board, and then you might be interested in something else, and, like, for us, it's all about um, people being happy in the work that they're doing, and so if they say, I'm really interested in this, then um, we try and pair them up, so um, recently, there was a lovely young girl who wrote me an email through my company, um, Brown Sugar Apple Grant um, Company <laughs> website, and she sent an email through, and her email was awesome and I was like I'm gonna learn stuff from you what so did she, write? What did she do <laughs> she, what did was, you... she basically just said um this is this is my name this is where I'm from I'm in Auckland I'm doing I'm, I'm at university I'm doing uh I think it's a law degree um but I'm really interested in writing but I know that I want to have another degree under my belt and I'm really quite good at this so I thought I'll do this as well um, I love comedy. I did a case study on Auckland Days in, at, at, when I was in year 13. I was like, oh man, I am loving her. Um, but she was just, but she, you know, she's like, I love comedy. Um, I love Flat 3. I've just watched Find Me a Mighty Bride and I absolutely love it. And I want to be your intern over summer. And for me, I'm like, boom, you're in. Because she she was just so, so proactive and nice. She and obviously had done her homework. She did her homework, yeah. uh, like she did her homework in year 13. <laughs> you know, like years ago um, but she was really awesome so then I emailed her and I, you know I said to my husband who's also my business partner I was like man we're gonna learn so much from her she's yeah. like all over it yeah. um, and then I had a meeting with her and she was fantastic and she just was awesome and today um, I connected her with so Fl Flat 3 is also a show that I produce and they did, um, we've just got funding for Friday Night Bites, and they had a storylining session today, and they wanted to invite a few people, and so I've just contacted her and said, how about you come and attend this, and you can be there and see how that works, and she just had an absolutely amazing time doing it. But, you know, she was proactive, she, she, done, she, yeah, she just, she knows lots, she's awesome, and if I can help her career grow, then I will. You know, so I think if you've got if you've got um, um, really high level directors, they've got a lot of gatekeepers. Yes. I think before you'd even get yes. to them. So and some get annoyed with the with your Peter Jackson has direct. a minder. Yeah. You know, I remember Shane used to hate anyone contacting him yes. because he used to find it hard to say no. I think in a weird way. Yes. So he. So I think you know that's really. So you need to know what the director. So I would. And it might not be the director. Yes. It might not be the director. It might be their PA. It might yeah. be the producer. It might be the producer's yeah. assistant. Yeah, a lot of directors <coughs> on things on series like um, Almighty Johnson's or things like that, they're essentially guns for hire. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're brought in. It's the production yes. company or the writer. It's like finding out who that person who who is at the heart of that production. Yeah. Oh, who's the showrunner? Yeah, who's, who's the that show guy? You know, the guy that won the Academy Award, you know, who, that beautiful actor who did the, um, the theory of everything, whatever it is. Oh, um... 
No, no, the other, uh, Eddie, Eddie Redmayne. Oh, Eddie. Eddie Redmayne. Swim and Graham Norton. And he, he hustled for that role. Outside of his agent, he got hold of a director. He he he, he burned to play that role. So you do see a few success stories, and what an amazing job he did too. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's I think it's really I think I agree with you, but it's really hard. It depends on who the director yeah. is. So you in a way it's that doing that back research, knowing someone like you would be totally open to it, but some directors couldn't cope with it, and that's where your agent really should work for you. To but find out what you yeah. should do with with you to say like I'm prepared to go on a limb, yeah. but what would be the right protocol? Would it annoy this person? Yeah, mm. and agents have knowledge, right? Yeah. They trade in knowledge, like that's mm. their whole. They have to know what shows are coming up, what's what's going, who's the who's the person to talk to about that. Because I often get stuff from agents as well. Mm. Hey, I've got this actor. They're doing this. Have a yeah. look at this link. Mm. Yeah, you know, and so that's cool. So your agent can be your best friend if you're. Sort of proactive and working with well with them, but you know the guy who wrote the theory of everything was at the big screen symposium. Oh really? Yeah, and he said that he went to see um, the wife, uh, yeah. and and he said to her because uh, she wrote a book and the book was like all scathing and like really, <laughs> you know, and he went to see her and thought. I'll charm her. She asked. He said he wanted to um, write, do, make the movie, write the movie, and um, he thought. I'll, she invited him in for a sherry, and he thought this is going to be great. I'm going to charm her, and I'm going to walk out of here. And, and it was like eight years later before she said yes. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so he was like, "This is probably a you know everybody's hustling." Yeah. <laughs> a year later, hi, me again. Yeah. 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 How's that sherry yeah. going? Well, you're a bot. Yeah. But he obviously, he obviously walked a very fine line That's of right. talking too hard. Totally. Just right Every Christmas. Did you get my case of sherry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Every year it escalates. That's right. Suddenly a truck arrives. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I bought you a house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you. Any other you questions? Yeah, I think so. Because, I mean, what do agents take these days? Like 10%, 15%? 15% on screen, usually, 10% with theatre. 15% yeah. screen and um, uh, voiceovers. And yeah, and you think theater. about how many people are on their books and how much work they have to do. And, and I guess, remember how much they're taking. And then how fast do you want to move, you know, I guess? It's easier to have an agent. You should try to have everything. You, know, you should be, I think, everything you can do. And then but enjoy your life because yeah. you know it's a, it's a great lifestyle being an actor, but it's also a really hard one. Think about you know you know like actually you, unless you no one gets paid heaps, so you've got to be really enjoy the game of it. It's a game, you know, and it yeah. and it can be really fun. Well, some people get a lot. <laughs> <laughs> some people, some get, people a lot. get a lot. A lot I'm lot. sure Benedict Cumberbatch is making a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? Got a lot of knowledge here, so mine it. Um, about like publicists, so I wouldn't know where to start. If you yeah. had your own project yeah. and you wanted to approach someone about it, I wouldn't even know who to approach, what to approach, how So to you're talking them. about you doing your own publicity? Yeah, if I had my own if production I had my series and I wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, so I mean, probably, I mean, what, what, what classically what you do is you write a media release. And then you, you can look at different formats of that. If you go into Scoop, you can see how people write those. And you write a media release and you send it out to all media. What publicists have, which is vital to everyone else, is contacts. So it's getting it out there. But if you have to do it yourself, it's the same thing as like working out who's your directors and your people you want to work with. Read the media and find out who you think would be good to write about your project. So read the Herald and go, okay, is it the entertainment writer? Is there a social issue? Who would be the best to cover my stuff? And then approach that person ad hoc. You can pay for a service um, where you get it out to all of national media, but personally, I think, unless, you know, your Iggy Pop, it's a waste of time. Yeah. Um, it's actually... It's Again, the, it's that niche. It's the niche. Thing, it's working it? out for you. Who would write best? Is it the spin-off? What, who is writes best about your stuff? Write a media release, approach that person, do a particular pitch to them. So you'll have a media release which may say generically that you'll send about your work and why you've done it and who's in it. And then you might write a, what I call a pitch to that media person. So you'll work out what does that person write about, mm-hmm. what are their interests, what, what are their issues that they want to write about. And in your pitch, 
you will say, this is how I hit the mark. You, this is why you want to write about me. This is what's in this show that could that fit that what you write really about. well with you as a writer. So it might be someone might write a TV column or someone might write an arts column. You need to work out what their writing style is and basically package it up for them. I mean, that's what I. That's what I. That's my craft. That's what I do. But you can do it yourself if you. And then there's a lot of free stuff too. So you you go for stories, and that will be knowing journalists what they write about, targeting them. And then there's lots of listings, and if you get a really good image, it's always really awesome because people. The state of the media is that people don't have a lot of budgets either. I mean, at the Herald last week. Uh, announced there was like 25 redundancies of really serious senior journalists and arts people. So things are just sliding downhill. So if you can get things that people go, wow, I can not do any work and just fill and that here's in here's a great in, image and most of and the stories already written, written, written. Blurb, then they're going to do it. It's easy, makes the job easy for them. So, I mean, obviously most people pull from, for events anyway, from Event Finder. Anyone can list on there, it's free. Um, but in terms of, I don't know where, and, and TV listings and, and things are harder to get, but just read and look and then target that person. Even, it's even okay to say, I really like your work I, and I really want to invite you to something. Do you want to have a look at my stuff before the rest of the world sees it? You know, just to be smart and know who you're talking to. They're just people sitting behind computers being evil. <laughs> but you know, no, you know what I mean? <laughs> evil but helpful sometimes. <laughs> What I do as a publicist is I get your stuff and I put it out in front of me and I go, what are the stories here? And I and you can write a media release. I, and I can write an article too. Sometimes for some publications, I'll write the actual article. So I write the media release, get the article, get as many stories placed as possible. That's my job. And then I also hustle reviewers and people to cover the blog or what the work once it's out. And so my craft is mining as many stories or opportunities out of a project. And do you find people maintain relationships with you? Like, yeah. So you wouldn't still be in the business if you yeah. didn't? Yeah, I'm quite a full-on person. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I kind of, yeah, I've kind of developed those relationships. People don't, people, <laughs> people move, people, the arts people stay, people, it's a small industry and people stay places and there's also lots of, I have young young people working for me too that kind of do a, a few more of the, like what's popping up a lot now, as you all know, is people writing their own blogs, people getting their own followers. I'll be targeting people now that have a thousand plus Twitter followers to come to shows because they can Twitter about them. You know, people who really have probably little experience with stuff. So we can then look at those people, be in contact with them and get them to come and help us cover the work. Yeah. And how does it work pay-wise if somebody is in a show yeah. Well, and then, I mean, I mean, obviously, it's really hard because people. It's like you say, people don't really know what you do, and they think, oh, she just has a glass of wine and gets on the phone, which is partially true. <laughs> 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 don't be too upset. <laughs> but actually, it is. It is a lot to sit down and go through a job and write something and. So, I mean, I don't know, we... And also having those contacts. Yes, the contacts. You know, you could spend hours and hours and hours sorting out 20 contacts that yeah. would be suitable for your production. Mm. And you've already got really. relationships with them. And but also can look and think laterally about what, how to pitch your show. So I've, for my personal model, I've kept a business where I've got some young people working for me and I do kind of more senior stuff. So it's meant that sometimes I can, because I like to give back, I can do a few cheaper jobs because I can get a younger person to work on them and I can basically mentor it. That's how it kind of rolls down. Um, but I don't know what, with my first job I ever did, and that's probably how sometimes you've got to work it, you get someone who's good at crapping on and get and just beg them to do it. I think the first job I did for Shane was like $500 where he just forced me to do it. But you can pay anywhere from, I mean, I guess, I don't know, do you want me to tell you what the fee structure is? Is I that what you... Know Oh, well, you can no, negotiate. You can well, sometimes do. negotiate that if, if they're really if they're really poor. I mean, a show at the basement is usually about two and a half thousand mm dollars, -hmm. but then it can go up to about six thousand dollars for like a big touring show or or more. But sometimes, if the stars align and you catch me with a bit of passion and you come and sell yourself and you bring a glass of Chardonnay and, just had a bottle of and you talk bottle to me about how amazing you are and that you're going to go on to do things and you're going to hire me again. 
can't do a YouTuber deal. Yeah. That's the, how the hustle goes. When I get famous, you're going to be my publicist, <laughs> my personal publicist. But you know, you could, you know, like, you look, so you might look at my personality and go, oh, she's, you know, she, she donates to the blind dog. She likes a glass of Chardonnay. Or if I tell her I'm doing a really positive thing in the community, she'll, she'll come up and see me. I'll, I'll probably do it for you, Chief. That's how the hustle goes. That's the game. Yeah. yeah. I'll see. I'll see you next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, a good publicist, if they're doing their work, will make that money back. You'll right. make that money we'll make back. That money back. That's the idea. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you've got to look at what size house you're going to get and what you possibly could earn out of yeah. the house and go two How and a half thousand tickets? dollars. That could potentially be all we earn from the entire yeah, season. Yeah, <laughs> You know, so. You're going to if you're sometimes it's cheaper to if you're and some people really if you're in a festival so if you're in like a and so I do a couple of deals with if, if someone's in the comedy festival or the fringe festival or something where I do a top up fee so I'll do my job as a festival publicist but then they go well I want a bit more care and then it can be a bit cheaper sometimes if you can negotiate mm. a top up fee which can make it better for you to be in that festival model it's quite good to be in festivals I think mm. ah, you, you, yeah. yeah. So how does that work here at the basement, Gabby? So if there is something like the comedy festival, is that just taken care of by the comedy festival? What about yeah. things like um, Fringe? Same thing? Um, sometimes we tell people to go to the show. Yeah, yeah. so um, we all, you know, it's like... Yeah, but at, yeah. at the basement we have a publicity pack. So um, we have a list of media contacts and we also um, have a document on how to create a pitch and everything that Michelle said. We basically mm -hmm. learned off Michelle. Um, and our media contacts list, we try to update it as much as possible, but we're not in the media, so it makes it kind of hard um, to keep updating those because there is a fast turnover. It can be, yeah. Um, so we tr as the basement tries to help as much as we can, but um, we just don't have the expertise that... No, and also contacts. festivals. So a festival hires me, they will ask for a contact list, which I will actually give to people because it's part of my paid job. It's just sometimes people won't answer you. People will answer me because they go, oh, not that woman again. She's been hounding me for 10 years, you know. But that's part of it too. But people will be, gen people will, people will be generous with you when you start out. Yeah. They just will be, mm. you know. Otherwise, they should be sharp, pal. Yeah. <laughs> if you're nice. Yeah, if you're nice. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's also about the follow-up, isn't it? So you send the pitch out and then yeah. do another follow-up. And then follow it's about up. sometimes I have to, like, force people sometimes to do stories. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and we've found at the basement um, those people that can't necessarily afford a publicist but really want to get publicity. Um, they some people have done cold calls and have had yeah. real success from yeah. that. And it's just about being real brave, having a yeah. script in front of them, and doing a cold call. And mm. it seems and to rehearsing that is fine. And you know, you talk that. about we talk about rehearsal. Actors love rehearsal. Yeah, they feel better with a bit of rehearsal. And sometimes it's nice for media to go wow at, at the actual artist run. I mean, mm. usually you don't want to do it, but, you know, if you specifically have targeted people, you won't want to make, like, 50 calls, but if there's one or two people that you think, for your niche, like you were saying, mm. then it's, it's, you just have to pluck up the courage. Mm. We've probably got time for a, one or two more questions, yes. Um, with the, like, branding yourself and, you know, promoting yourself, um, how would you start building your brand on, you know, social media, like Facebook? Like how, just like, how do you start? Like, what do you do? <laughs> wow. Are you talking to everyone? Yeah. yeah, it's a general question. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that you do have to choose, I mean, I know you mentioned there's a whole heap of social media um, platforms that you can engage with, but I think you do need to, to think, it's a hell of a job keeping it up. Mm. And I think you have to pick what's right for you. If Instagram is the best thing for you because you take awesome photos and that's what's going to travel and you can tell stories in the photos or you can do those 15 second videos that um, are going to be really funny or they're going to they're going to be really interesting or whatever it is and that's your medium, then go for it. But if, if you think Facebook is better because you can... Um, uh, maybe have longer posts, you can have longer videos, you can, you know, it depends on what's good for you. I mean, if you want to make an account with all of them, that's fine. But if you start one and then you can't keep it up or you, and you have three, then you might find that it's too much for you and you're in a little bit of a mess. Like, <laughs> maybe choose who you're going to follow, for instance. You might get them following you back. So if you, you know, 
find all the people that you like in the industry yeah, and target. follow them. Have and a great photo. Like, well, I, I always think it goes back to what is your brand? So do you want, can you sing, can you dance? Do you want to be in theatre? So if you want to be on the stage, get a photo of yourself looking like a theatre actress, whatever that means. Go and look at other people's photos. Plaster it on. Follow people. Make comments. I went to the theatre last night. I saw this show. Start going, what is your brand? Where do you see yourself in one year, five years? Who do you want to be working with? And that will, everything will fall into place from there. And it doesn't always have, what you post doesn't always have to be about you. No. Um, you know, yeah, like, right. like with Twitter, for example, that's about sharing information. Twitter is about sharing information and having conversation. It's yeah. not about just talking about yourself. <laughs> because that gets boring. Yeah. Um, so, so it is. So, if you're interested in comedy and you're on Facebook, you might be posting really choice comedy links that are both local and international. So you're kind of really interested in what's happening in the world of that, or um, you know, or it might be television shows or whatever it is that you're into. But it doesn't have to always be. Uh, you don't have to always try to be coming up with something new about yourself every single day. Like you can pull on other things and, and, and support other communities uh, locally who are doing the same thing because then they'll be supporting you. They'll share your stuff. I imagine that you've got to know some of the ardent fans, for instance, of some of the web series. Yeah. And because then, they've kept everything you've put up. They've had a, a comment on that that's they've right. loved about That's it right. Something. And so you engage by replying back to their comment and then you find that they're your best advocate. They're like sharing all your stuff everywhere and talking about it and whatever and they might show up, you know, and, and, and you meet them in you. person. You go, you okay, meet you're them in person. It's that, like, yeah. You're fangirl three or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you know, if they're going to stalk, I mean, I love stalking people. I stalk people all the time <laughs> because they're probably stalking me too. <laughs> so let's know about each other when we meet. Yeah, but how, how are you stalking them when they don't think you're a stalker? Yeah. Well, how, how are you doing that? How do you mean? Are you just doing it behind the scenes, just finding out all about them? Facebook. Yeah. Facebook. I, I, Facebook. But you don't stalk them in, in front of them. No. Oh, well. <laughs> right there again. Do you just find out all about that person? Yeah. And, and like, then, I totally stalk them little, online. Cute little comment. Or yeah, like, recently I had to. Um, read a whole heap of scripts and um, you know give feedback on all these scripts and I just stalked everyone in all the teams it took me ages <laughs> to kind of, but I got addicted to it and so now I know all these new filmmakers that are all over the country that I had no idea about before and um, god they're amazing yeah but you know like I don't know I just it was it was ridiculous because I needed to go to bed <laughs> <laughs> but um, I do sometimes I do wonder but, yeah right yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. interested in knowing about people and when people are really excited about your stuff, or they're always commenting, and I'm like, what, 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 what is, what is this person? What do they do? What do they? Yeah, do? you do want to know. You know, like I want to know. Yeah. So I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a good thing. So you know she's available for any time. Yeah. And uh, one more question. Yes. Hi. It's not like uh, it would really ask for this question, but it's a bit about the branding side of things. So I understand you should know who you are and, and put it out there and have the right photograph. Etc. Etc. What, what? What? How do you deal with the fact that you think you're a particular brand, but everyone else is looking? All the agents and the publicists are looking at are seeing something very different. How do you get to? What's the best way of getting to to get it on the mark? You know, you are this brand, and people are seeing that. Is it something okay. That feels you, so you mean that other people are sort of p pigeonholing you into yeah. something that? Yeah, um, that's interesting. So the flat three girls had exactly that. They would get, and they still do, so they get called up for auditions for prostitutes mm. because they're Asian. Okay, so, so does everybody so, know what flat three is? If you don't, flat three is... Uh, it's, flat three is a web series um, about three Kiwi Asian girls in their 20s trying to make it in love, life and relationships and failing miserably. So that's kind of their whole thing. They're inspired by Judd Apatow and, you know, girls and, like, that kind of comedy. And they were getting sick of being auditioned for the same stuff. That was almost humiliating for them. And um, so they decided they wanted to just shake it up and do something that was just like, we're normal, like, you know, we can be interesting as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, they weren't, and also they weren't seeing themselves on screen in New Zealand. And that was a real issue. Um, and that's something that... At Brown to Grapple Grant, we like to tell stories, um, I guess, mi you, minority voices and push those stories out there and do it through um, comedy and good drama and storytelling and whatever. So, um, yeah, so they came up with that and they wanted to make that and, and they did and it was a, a 
great runaway success um, and they're still getting funded and, and making stuff. But that was, one, you know, people see us as this, but we can be so much more than that and we see ourselves as this and this is where we want to go. So they just got really proactive and kind of proved it. So they made their own work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, that sounds like potentially a, a, a deeper conversation with your agent. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Um, if you're continually pushed into something that you don't mm -hmm. feel is you, and what would get your voice across? What would get your? Maybe it's how you. Maybe it's being on on Twitter and telling us more about you, or maybe it's the conversations you're engaging with, or maybe. Isn't there a isn't there a Facebook page? Um, there's. A there's all sorts of Facebook pages about all sorts of things, um, but but I'm <laughs> I, and I'm not sure what you're interested in, like what what it is, what it what direction you're trying to go in. So, but there is, you can connect with communities that kind of are feeling the same thing or want are working in the same way or whatever you know. Sorry, that's a useless explanation. Sometimes it <laughs> sometimes I think it takes time too. So you go with the stereotype, you work, you work it, and then you, eat, you slowly change your brand. As you get more known and you get more famous, if you yeah. get that link, like the Dis all the Disney change. kids, right? All the Disney actors yeah. are like, I'm going to go and make a sex film! Yeah. Yeah. And we're all like, yeah! And all the kids are like, oh. yeah. You can use your tails a bit more as you, as you... Sometimes it's just good to make your mark and then you can change, shift your brand, slowly, slowly chip away. <laughs> Think about open market, the opposite. Some people who market too much himself, like spend like uh, ten hours on Facebook, <laughs> publish himself, he doesn't have a time to improve as a performance. Oh, that's bad. <laughs> because there's, there are so many actors, they 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 market too much himself. You know, like it's over market, or even you know. I think know. as long as what you're talking about, as long as it's new content. It doesn't irritate people. So if you're saying about yourself and you keep saying the same thing again and again, people go, oh, shut up. But if it's if you're drawing creatively on new content or you're doing you're putting clips up of other people's work, you're seeing about being a bit more generous about your activity, then it's not irritating, I find. Yeah. No well, one wants to hear something half yeah, and I like when I'm um, seeing that somebody's traveling and like around the country and yeah. touring somewhere else and yeah. doing this I like to know well, and I like people's interests people posting the other stuff or the things they find funny or mm -hmm. so you're still being in someone's face but you're just not bashing on about the same thing the whole time so recently I was at VidCon in LA which is like a big um, it's like a big web conference and they have all these different tiers and you go along and they have like community which is all the fans which is pretty much you know 12 to 16 year old girls it was like thousands of them and we were like whoa um and then you have um community which is people who are making the content and then industry which is producers and film film television um, makers and all that kind of stuff and one of the things that they said oh no i forgot um hang on one of the <laughs> the the thing about oh yeah one of the interesting things that one of the guys said was because because the woman asked him why do people share content and he said, because it's people having a conversation with someone else. It's not about the content. It's about our relationship with each other. So if I find something really funny, I'm going to share it with my husband because we just had that joke about our kid or whatever it is. Do you know what I mean? So I'm sharing content because it's, it's my relationship with whoever I'm sharing it with. We're having a conversation. It isn't about... The content. I mean, it is about the content, but it isn't about the content. Like, like on a deeper level, this. you'll get this. So you'll level it, yeah. and you'll be great. Yeah. I think. I think that. Yeah. yeah it's so kind so of like I'm going to send this to Jennifer because we were talking about the Rainbow Warrior, and she's going to be interested in this. Mm. And so that's why you share content. So if your content is constantly about how you like pizza, <laughs> then you know you could probably share that with sales but I don't know if the rest of us would be you know what I mean like yeah. so it's kind of like that's the that's like having the same conversation over and over and over again yeah. how do we change the conversation I was recently in Edinburgh and what I noticed over there um, well, is that I was Twitter recently is huge <laughs> <laughs> and for the festival Twitter
Twitter goes crazy and it's all about going to see a show and tweeting that person who's created the show and then they tweet back and yes. you don't know them but yes. you're starting a conversation with them and that's how they promote each other's shows. Absolutely. Um, and what's good about that because, because you're talking about um, that is that audience who are fans want to have a direct link with the content creator mm. and that's what's powerful. Yeah. Mm. Because then the content creator is the person that they go, I can tweet that person. Like, I love the newsroom, for example, and I know the characters on Twitter are not the people in the movie, in the, you know, in the series. But, oh, my God, when Maggie sends me a tweet, I'm like, you, yeah, baby. My husband's like, that's not her. Like, I know, but, you know, I'm yeah, living fun. in the world of newsroom. Yeah, this is yeah. great. You're like, Tyke is really good at it. He's yeah, so Tyke is great. He is fantastic yeah. at it. Mm. Yeah. Look at his stuff. I'd personally love to see that at the basement where um, people are tweeting to each other um, about their shows that are coming up because yeah. um, we do 120 shows a year at the basement. So, you know, you can you should be talking to each other and uh, talking to those shows that are two weeks after you and they can talk back to you and just help each other yeah. out. Hey, show I'd number 29, how are you doing? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> That'd be really cool, actually. <laughs> this is from show number 100. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we've, um, we've, we've, oh, these women are nice, nice to rest now and a glass of wine. Uh, uh, thank you so much for coming along. I hope you've had many questions answered and um, thank you very, very much, Kerry and Gabrielle and Michelle. You've absolutely um, expanded our minds on all sorts of things. <laughs> she likes a glass of wine. <laughs> She's got one in her head. Yeah. And, <laughs> and dog and blind dogs, yeah. not blind dogs. Dogs for the blind. Yeah. yeah. Um, so could you please give our panelists a warm round?